Good morning and welcome to our church online. Yes, we are back online um, because under various regulations we've been asked not to meet uh, publicly, but we do have a plan for that which, we'll, which we're sharing just a few moments. But the meanwhile, um, we just uh, it's good to have you with us and I hope you're all keeping well and you're keeping safe. Let's, I'm just going to hand over to Carolyn, who's got, a, got an idea of what we're doing. So, um, as we can all watch and share on this service online, what we can't do is get together. But we are allowed to walk with one other person. So the idea is to have a planned half hour walk from the church car park, starting at 10.30 in the morning, um, meet up with one other person and go around and walk and chat about what God's been doing, um, about football, about anything you like, uh, with one other person from the church. Because the Bible does say where two or three are gathered, there God is in the midst. So God can be in the middle of our conversations as we walk around the park. So if it's not raining too heavily, and if you would like to join and meet with one other person to walk in the park, it's 10.30 in the church car park on Sunday morning. Brilliant, thank you. So hopefully that's where your appetite. I've already got my trainers on, so I'm ready to go. And uh, yes, you don't have to walk across a, a, a muddy park. You can just walk around the streets if you wish to. But what we're going to ask you to do is to perhaps engage with what we're doing first. We're going to have this online uh, service together. And, uh, after, and uh, that's going to be pictured by a few questions we're going to ask as well which hopefully you'll take out and uh, it'll be a good topic for discussion. Over the uh, next few weeks, we're going to be looking at uh, a series of monologues. And this week, um, we've got a monologue by Satan himself. <laughs> and uh, yes, Satan himself. And, uh, and hopefully a few provocative questions will come from that, which will stimulate discussion when we're, we're walking and talking together. But let's keep safe and let's do what we can within the uh, parameters that is set for us. So let's uh, just open in prayer, shall we, as we start. Lord, we just thank you that you are in control. Thank you, Lord, that you love each one of us and that you have our best interest at heart. We ask, Lord, particularly that you'll be with those who are struggling at this time. But Lord, we just pray above all that you'll help us to connect in every way we can. And Lord, we pray that this service will be a, a honouring to you. And uh, Lord, that will stimulate um, discussion. Lord, just bless us as we meet together now in Jesus' name. i 
six, six weeks, I think. And, uh, and as you can see, I'm standing in front of these beautiful paintings that Helen Youssef has uh, painted for our church. And uh, I think you'll agree, they're rather beautiful with gold on them. Um, so this morning, I'm going to be reading um, the word from Luke 4, 1 to 13. So this is Jesus tested in the wilderness. So from the moment of his baptism, Jesus was overflowing with the Holy Spirit. He was taken by the Spirit from the Jordan into the lonely wilderness of Judea to experience the ordeal of testing by the accuser for 40 days. He ate no food during this time and ended his 40-day fast very hungry. It was then the devil said to him, If you are really the Son of God, command this stone to turn into a loaf of bread for you. But Jesus replied, I will not. For it is written in the scriptures, life does not come only from eating bread, but from God. Life flows from every revelation from his mouth. The devil lifted Jesus high into the sky and in a flash showed him all the kingdoms and regions of the world. The devil said to Jesus, all of this, with all its power, authority and splendor is mine to give to whom I wish. Just do one thing and you will have it all. Simply bow down to worship me and it will be yours. You will possess everything. Jesus rebuked him and said, Satan, get behind me, for it is written in the scriptures, only one is worthy of your adoration. You will worship before the Lord your God and love him su uh, supremely. Next, the devil took Jesus to Jerusalem and set him on the highest point of the temple and tempted him there, saying, If you really are the Son of God, Jump down in front of all the people, for it is written in the scriptures, God has given his angels instructions to protect you from harm. For the hands of angels will hold you up and keep you from hurting even one foot on a stone. Jesus replied, it is also written in the scriptures, how dare you provoke the Lord your God. That finished the devil's harassment for the time being. So he stood off at a distance, retreating until the time came to return and tempt Jesus again. I rule the earth through my deceptions and my temptations. Even though you Americans refuse to recognize it, I am very powerful. But I am not nearly as powerful as God. I am not all-knowing and I am not all-powerful. If I were, I would have known that the beginning of Jesus' ministry was the beginning of my end. The all-knowing God must have taken some satisfaction as he revealed my future to me over the next three years. A future that is still coming to pass. My doom began to be revealed immediately. Jesus began to cast my demons out of people. Demons who had ruled people's lives by tormenting them and by lowering their resistance to temptation. Demons who had been able to get people to worship me, even to the point of killing their own babies. When I lost control of my demons, I knew what was in store. My end. Jesus preached over the next three years, and I began to understand how complete my defeat and demise would be. Panicked, I struggled to find a survival plan and came up with a brilliant one. I decided to use God's people to destroy God's son. When Jesus was dead, all would go back to normal. It was simple to steer the religious leaders into hating Jesus. I fueled their self-righteousness and they hardened their hearts. Even more damaging, I orchestrated opportunities for them to be embarrassed by Jesus in public. Within a short period of time, they made plans to kill him. Once they intended to kill him, it was easy. One of Jesus' own apostles took the bait and betrayed him. Days later, Jesus was dead and my troubles were over. I had defeated the God of the universe. <laughs> I threw a party that no human could match. I won't admit to a hangover, but I was in a bit of a daze when 
One of my demons gave me the bad news. God raised Jesus from the dead. I knew that I had actually aided God in his redemption plan for all mankind. I had fallen into his trap because of my pride. That was a horrible time for me. But it was going to get worse, much worse. Jesus was going to replace himself with the Holy Spirit. And his spirit would enable his followers to have powers to resist me that I could not overcome. I knew I could not withstand the power of Holy Spirit, but what I didn't foresee was how Holy Spirit would wield his power through the church. The church. God had this secret weapon all planned and he sprung it on me. I was engulfed in a trap from which I could never escape. The church is a primary reason I am to be ultimately destroyed by Jesus. <laughs> well, I know my ultimate fate, cast into hell for an eternity, along with my demons. That is going to happen, and I cannot deny it. But before I go, I will do as much damage as I can to you and your family and your friends. I want as much company as I can get. Realize that threat is not empty. I am the ultimate adversary. I have tremendous powers of persuasion and temptation. However, even I cannot withstand God. And for some reason that I cannot fathom, God is patient and doesn't want any of his precious humans to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. As one of my former victims, Peter wrote, The day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar, the elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything is to be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. My job is to keep you from living like that, not wanting to speed the day of my destruction. The good news? No. For me, anyway. It's becoming easier and easier to keep people from leading holy and godly lives. No longer do I use stone or wooden idols. No longer do I rely on the use of desire for great riches. My new strategy, just eliminate the desire people have to be holy and godly. I don't need them to desire to be sinful and hateful. I just need them to be complacent and distracted. It's proving much easier than I expected. I started out with some simple entertainments. Those proved so successful that I moved on to more powerful distractions, traps, if you will, internet, video on demand, smartphones, social networks. I just love it that now the average human spends hours a day just watching screens. Believe me, it's not the screens or technology any more than idols of the past were bad because they were wood or stone. It's the value placed on them, the devotion, the attention, the time, both quality and quantity. That's what makes an idol. 
I make an immense headway. Individuals are becoming isolated from each other, families are being destroyed. Many people know they can be saved by calling on the name of the Lord, but fewer and fewer are even bothering because they are so distracted by unimportant things. I feel like I am back on a roll. I'm feeling good. But I can't shake the sense of impending doom. I'm really pleased to invite Mark to uh, um, come and be questioned now, and uh, I'm sure he's got one or two questions for me as well. But uh, we're going to just have a chat just about um, what we've just seen together. And uh, hopefully there's lots of uh, questions and, and thoughts that are already going through your mind as you just watch the, uh, the video. So Mark, I'm gonna ask you first, um, what kind of struck you? What, was there one thing in particular that struck you about that video? Well, Kevin, I'd just like to say first off, I'm, um, I'm really impressed that if you're, spe you're your special guest today after the devil, and the first person you Absolutely. thought to fight after the devil was me, I, I think that's very impressive. I, I really don't Mark, know Mark you are that. the fount of all knowledge. So, <laughs> so, uh, Second yeah. only to the devil, obviously. Uh, indeed, indeed. Yeah, there is a pecking order, I'm sure, um, but yeah. Yeah, I find that interesting actually, Kevin. I think what struck me, the, the one thing that um, sort of playing around in my head is where the devil says, I use God's people to destroy God's son. Um, and that's just echoing with me that, um, you know, sometimes as God's people or as a church, do we get it right? And are we actually behaving or thinking in a way that is almost anti Jesus? You know, not, not a way that. Mm -hmm. almost goes against what he would want um, and then I suppose the other flip side of that was he started to refer to the church as God's secret weapon so that, that's a challenge I think for us so yeah. it's almost like what are we are we destroying God Jesus you know destroying God's son are we not behaving you know living right are we not acting right so we, we're sort of destroying God's son that anti God, anti Jesus, or are we God's secret weapon? So it's a challenge. I just mm. that went around my head. Just that idea of being a challenge to how we are as a church and how we behave. So would you say then we've got a, a responsibility under God to, you know, to uh, the, the, well as you said, the challenge is how we behave, but um, to how we how we react to something like that, how we respond to. To say to, to what Satan said, because I mean, if we've got that, if he feels that that we've got that responsibility, then um, surely that's you know that's it's God given. Yes, it's God, yes, a, a responsibility to yeah. represent God yeah. and, and be Jesus-like in the world rather than anti-Jesus, anti-Christ is actually but the word, but you know, <laughs> let's not go six 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 just yet. So, what could can you think of some of the challenges that will you know, that will we're, we're give us, really. Well, I think in regard to church, one of the biggest challenges is people want church to be the way they want it, or the way they like it. And we're very often quite inward looking and selfish, and want it to be all about us, but really, I know it's a cliche, but it's that old saying that the church is an organisation that doesn't exist for its members, it exists for other people. Mm. And I think that is one of the major challenges for the church. For far too long we've run church for what we want mm. rather than what other people need it to be sure. in our local sure. community. And I think the um, sort of decline of the church you know, says we've got it wrong. Mm. Uh, no, I agree. I think we can be very insular, can't we? And, uh, and I think we've always got to continually see what's happening around us yeah. so we can respond to it um, as a church. Um, so yeah. then, you've asked me enough questions. Okay, okay. All right. excuse yeah. me. It's All my right. turn to interrogate you. <laughs> so, okay, what could you, what could your attention, Kevin, was just thinking? Oh, uh, do you know, I think there was a number of things that really 
caught my attention really. Um, I, I, I'm going to go straight to almost to the end bit where um, he talked about all the things that distract us. You're easily distracted, Kevin. I am very easily <laughs> distracted. I am so easily distracted. No, but I am. Not real. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, uh, and we can just be, just in a second, we could just, you know, be almost lured away from what God really wants us to do and to do something else. And, um, and I think there are so many distractions as it is anyway, like, you know, the screen, for instance, isn't it? I mean, you're watching us on a screen here. Stop being distracted, um, don't read your Bible. <laughs> <laughs> but we are, uh, but we, we spend so much of our lives just watching a screen, don't we? Whether it's a TV or a computer or yeah. whatever. And uh, I just think th there's times when sometimes, you know, God can't really, well, I'm sure he can speak through that. But there are more than, more than likely times when we just need to sort of, you know, stop doing what we feel. Um, is filling our time and actually concentrate on what God wants um, us to do. And then maybe just sitting quietly and just, um, yeah, in his presence. Yeah, not always easy to sit quiet. No. And with no. ourselves sometimes. Yeah, we don't absolutely. like that as a child, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. okay. So, um, so, I mean, that's the sort of type of thing people could be reflecting on. Maybe people have other questions, but, you know, how do you think as a church we are in society? Do we really want to serve a local neighbourhood, what distracts us, what distracts me, what is God calling me to be in my local community, in my own personal life, my relationship with him. Yeah. Yeah. That's quite good for this week, Kevin. I, I think, think it is. Uh, there's enough there really for hopefully to uh, promote some good discussion. Excellent. Anyway. It's just been really good just to worship God together, isn't it? And just to be in his presence. It's only been for a short time, but hopefully we can extend what we've did uh, in our discussion, what we've uh, shared today. So let's just pray uh, a prayer together, and then we're going to finish with that uh, amazing song, uh, The Blessing. So let's pray. Father, thank you that uh, you've been with us here, and we ask, Lord, for your continued blessing upon us. Help us, Lord, to... Um, to make wise choices this week and to uh, <clears throat> do, Lord, what you want. And Lord, help us to uh, always be in your presence, Lord, to be focused on you and uh, not to be distracted. Lord, keep us close to you, we pray, through this tough time. And Lord, help us to hear what you want us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's hear the blessing to, to Thank you.